capitalism. Right? Ever since we were kids, we were taught that capitalism is the only economic system fit for a democracy that gives everyone an equal footing to better our lives and ourselves. Champions of capitalism have often touted this economic system has created jobs, provided your lives with meaning and purpose while you provide your family with food, shelter, water, health, and recreation. And these same champions claim that poverty is eradicated through the gifts that you earn through capitalism. And more and more, we're all realizing that all of this was just a steaming pile of horseshit. Now look, debunking even the most basic lies told about capitalism is easy to do, right? Let's start with jobs and see where that leads. Right now, it is true that capitalism has created jobs. But thanks to the exploitative nature of capitalism, a job is not something you earn an income doing something you love and are passionate about, but rather it's something you begrudgingly go to every day to provide basic needs for your family. It is impossible to say that you're passionate about a job when most of us are trying to use the bathroom as often as we can to try to break the monotony of the day. And sure, that sounds like you're robbing the company of valued time, but in reality, capitalism is robbing the worker by exploiting their labor day in and day out. It's basic math, really, right? If somebody had an idea to open up a pizza shop but doesn't know how to make a pizza, they would need to hire employees that do know how to make a pizza. This boss would provide the ingredients needed and a space to operate out of. If all that costs $1,000, and the two employees, pizza makers, so to speak, make an additional $2,000 with their labor, the idea would be to give that amount back to the worker, right? That's the, that's the cost of their labor. But the boss gets their $1,000 back to reinvest in more ingredients and the space. But in capitalism, they take a portion of the additional $2,000 profit for themselves. So the labor of the employees is effectively stolen. And each employee is only getting half of what they really earned, while the boss has just doubled their income. Now, with this in mind, the more employees a boss gets, the more profit they can steal and the richer they can become. But the important thing to note here is that they're stealing equally from every employee because capitalists believe in fairness. Now, this would make a little more sense if the boss was on the ground making pizzas, but it's unlikely that a boss actually knows how to be a laborer in any industry. Right? In the very beginning of a business enterprise, it could be true that the boss is one of the workers, but eventually they start taking a background role and start exploiting the labor of workers. And look, I get that that's a hyper-simplified version of a company, and it's not to say that administrative work isn't work, but that even administrators and managers are getting exploited within capitalism. And in a lot of cases, this isn't even how small businesses work, considering in most small businesses, the bosses are doing the work with the employees. The exploiters in this case are the owners, the family of owners, and the board of trustees made up of people that have likely never done a day of hard labor in their lives. Look, it's hard work counting all the money you've effectively stolen from your workers. All right, and in some cases they have to put in overtime because they've they've just they just stole that much of the wages. Okay, that it's it's that high level of wage theft. That's what we're looking for in capitalism. That's how you're really picking up picking yourself up by your bootstraps. And ultimately, that's what capitalists become. Exploiters for the sake of infinite profits. And if you're wondering how uh, a CEO of a company today can make upwards of 400 times that of the minimum wage of, the, of, a, uh, uh, of, of their lowest employee, well, this is how. They steal it. Look, I'm not even saying that exploiters are dumb or anything like that. In fact, I think exploitation is a sign of intelligence, but in my opinion, it's the lowest form of intelligence. All they know how to do is to make people do what they need them to do and then reap the benefits of that. 
The second the workers realize that they're being exploited and leave these folks, they have nothing they can fall back on. They don't know how to do the labor that's required to make the product. They'll be all alone. And at the end of the day, that is the destiny of any capitalist exploiter. Loneliness with piles of money and nothing to buy and no one to sell to. Till then, these folks are living the American dream that's pitched to us every single day of our lives. Getting everything for nothing. Work so you don't have to work. Look, this is the snake eating itself. And again, it's fitting because the snake has no friends to help it cook that nice mouse for dinner because the snake exploited all its other friends and now is alone and hungry and eating itself. Now, even if a job is something we do begrudgingly, the idea is that it still pays the bills to help us live comfortable lives. But even that's not really true. I mean, the early days of capitalism, it was required for even children to work at factories to help provide for their families. Kids weren't kids playing on swings. They were workers with nimble fingers and the ability to earn a profit for the bosses, not, not for their families. And even though these kids would work in the factories for pittances, they still believed in Santa because we have to preserve innocence somehow, right? But thanks to socialists in the labor movement in the early 1900s, it was determined that children shouldn't be working, but rather playing, learning, and being, well, kids. Today, kids don't work. Well, until they're 16 and their parents tell them that they need to work to buy their own video games and weed. Look, life is stressful for parents, and weed can be expensive depending on the state you're in or the dealer you have, which is most likely one of your kid's friends. But look, the socialists and the labor movements also got Americans the weekend, which, according to 80s music, is what we're working for. We're not working to make ends meet or for our families. We're working for the weekend. We're working not to work. Boy, this snake really just can't stop eating itself, huh? The labor movement also put into place a 40-hour work week. Now, today, most people have two, even three jobs. And we arrived to that through capitalist exploitation as well. For a while, capitalists were just pissed that they had to pay people a a living wage and, 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 and treat them like people. So in an effort to circumvent what the socialists in the labor movement fought for, they started hiring part-time workers who'd work anywhere from 15 to 39 hours in a week. And because one company doesn't make uh, any employee work past 40 hours, they're not really breaking any laws. The average worker then has to work seven days a week and up to 60 hours, and there's not a weekend in sight. Now, while most workers aren't seeing many weekends, the hip-hop artist The Weeknd was able to channel the spirit of capitalism into spending millions of his own money to create a frivolous Super Bowl halftime show during a time when American families are starving and waiting in modern-day bread lines. Hey, it's nice to see that some things are working out really well for the weekend. If you ever needed a glaring reality of what capitalism is, look no further than the Super Bowl and the weekend. So. The truth is that capitalism doesn't provide you with a job to help take care of your family, and nor does it provide you with meaningful work. The mere fact that people have a job is something that champions of capitalism have often said is proof that capitalism is amazing. They claim that Americans are doing so well considering the unemployment rate is so low. Look, if you have more than one job, yeah, it's going to seem like the unemployment is so low because people are overemployed. Look, if your golden economy can't run effectively with every person having one well-paying job, then your system is failing. And it's not like the unemployment rate by any means is accurate. right? As of December 2020, the Bureau of Labor claims that the unemployment rate is 6.7%. And... Throughout this pandemic, we've heard that the unemployment rate is at a record high, but the reports show that it's rather low. Right? Part of the issue with calculating unemployment is that there's no real calculation for it. 
I mean, the Bureau of Labor claims it's people without employment compared to the civilian workforce, right? Investopedia claims it's the amount of people looking for work, not people out of work. The GOP claims that it's, you know, people looking for a handout. And with that definition, the unemployment rate is actually 0%. None of us are looking for a handout. We're looking for an effective government that actually does its job and takes care of its people by ensuring that their basic needs, at a minimum, are taken care of. Besides, not having a definition of what unemployment is, uh, is, is, is important, right? Because unemployment is broken up into various different categories. That's right. There are six different categories of unemployment. Look, there are less Saiyan transformations in Dragon Ball Z than there are categories of unemployment. Spider-Man has less clones than num the number of categories in unemployment. There are less flavors of the Twix candy bar than there are categories of unemployment. And even those numbers aren't particularly accurate, since a lot of people who file for unemployment get miscategorized or fall through the cracks, not making it into any category of unemployment. The U3 category of unemployment is what's reported to the media and doesn't include folks like discouraged workers. Look, during this pandemic, people have built uh, the, their, their careers focusing on one thing, and now they can't do that thing. And pivoting to a different field is virtually impossible, primarily because their skills don't match what the job requires. They didn't build customer service skills when they're someone that does sound tech. So they're not built for changing careers. You know, these are people that are like former academics, folks in basically every level of the entertainment industry and so on and so on and on and on and on. A more accurate picture of the of unemployment is in category U6. This includes the discouraged workers, the underemployed, the part-timers, and even those that are going back to school. But even that number only comes up to 11.7% as of December of 2020. But don't forget about those miscategorized people and uncounted in the unemployment numbers. And thanks to that, we can see that the rate is actually 15.8%. But we don't count people that get sick and fall out of work or women who lost their jobs because their companies don't have maternity leave or folks that quit quit an unsafe work environment and are left in the void of the unemployment numbers. But hey, at least capitalism is reducing poverty around the world, right? Thanks to its powerful free market engine of the rich. Huh? Right, at least, at least, at least we can say poverty is taken care of by capitalism, right? Look, America's minimum wage has been stagnant for over a decade. And this is supposed to go up with the cost of living, but that hasn't really happened. In capitalism, living is earned. And I, and I really wish that that statement was an exaggeration, but the cost of birthing a child is astronomical. Okay, if pro-lifers were serious about life, then they would be for Medicare for All that covers the cost of having a baby. America's minimum wage is seven twenty-five an hour with a full-time job is about $12,000 a year. On average, a new car costs about $30,000. This means, on average, the worth of a worker annually is worth less than the cost of half of a new car. Capitalism values vehicles higher than it values a human worker. Now, the one thing we, the, the Democrats claimed would happen with the election of President Joe Biden was the passing of a $15 an hour minimum wage. And we almost had that, sort of, kind of, but not really. The Raise the Minimum Wage Act proposed the minimum wage would go up by 2025. That's about five years too late to be ten years too late on raising the minimum wage. This means that in five years, the annual income of an American worker would be the equivalent of a new car today when the cost of a new car in five years will be roughly $60,000 to ensure capitalism's consistency of making a car worth more than a human worker. Boy, when, when those rich assholes say that this car is worth more than your life, they, they fucking mean it, huh? They, they really mean that shit. There is proof that capitalism is a regressive economic ideology when you look at minimum wages throughout the years. 
During the Great Depression, which is touted as America's dark time, minimum wage actually went up. In fact, America had the highest minimum wage around. Now, capitalists use this information and regard, uh, disregard the true history of why this happened and say, Hooray for capitalists! We did it! Please love us, because we did it. Now, the reality is that capitalists fought against paying workers a decent wage. Socialists from the labor movement organized massive strikes for the better part of the early 20th century to push politicians further to the left and increase minimum wage, grant unions more power, and ensure that someone was at the negotiating table on behalf of the working class. The capitalists used the military to fire on their own citizens who were asking to be paid what they're worth and have enough to feed, clothe, and house their families. The reason why America's minimum wage in the world the reason why America had the best minimum wage in the world during an economic collapse was because the working class saw solidarity in their cause, dropped racial, gender, and cultural lines, and decided to fight for humanity. If that could happen at the time of a Great Depression, then I think it can happen during this one too. Now, but capitalists love exploitation so much that they have exploited history itself. Capitalists are fine with poverty and manufacture it for the sake of infinite profits for the few. In fact, manufactured poverty is the root of most racial and xenophobic hatred in our societies. Instead of showing the reality of how poverty is manufactured by the champions of capitalism, they blame the other. Right? The reason why the American worker is losing their jobs is because the black, brown, and Asian communities have come in and forcefully taken the employment from strong-willed, eagle-hearted capitalist CEOs using shifty socialist magic. Okay, The reason why the American worker... Is, is losing their jobs is because the immigrants that disrespect imaginary lines are busting through the doors of the factory, tossing good, red-blooded Americans out and taking their spot in the production line with questionably colored blood. Again, the reality shows us something very, very different. Capitalists look for nations where they can exploit workers instead of paying them a decent living wage for double, if not more, of that profit. An even bigger reality is that every economic downturn and crash has been manufactured by the capitalists themselves. After the creation of America's centralized bank, the Federal, Federal Reserve, or the Fed, it was responsible for basically every single crash in the 20th and 21st century. In 1914, a year after its creation, the Fed approved a bunch of loans to people and smaller community banks. After a few years, the Fed said that they were out of money and called in all the loans. The smaller banks couldn't pay off their loans so quickly, which forced them to crash, and they were bought up by banks associated with the Fed. Now, in 1921, they sold people on margin loans. The people could purchase stocks and bonds at a 10% of at 10 of its price, while the bank would loan you the other 90%. The stocks would appreciate over time, and the idea was that you could pay off the loan and then turn yourself a profit. Now, the catch was that when the loans were called in, and they could be called in whenever they whenever the banks felt like they wanted to call them in, the people had 24 hours to pay them off. The champions of capitalism, capitalism like Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, the Rothschild, pulled their money out of the markets and caused it to crash. All the loans were then called in, and then people lost everything. Hence, the Great Depression. But this is how the game of capitalism works, right? When, when we the people decide to play along with the capitalists, they don't particularly like it. Wall Street and the stock exchange was revealed to be a game where the rich make billions off of the manufactured failures of certain businesses and companies. I mean, this is the idea of selling shorts. And sure, yes, it sounds like something a pervert would do where they enter your home and take all your shorts and leave you with nothing but pants for the summer and then force you to buy your own shorts back at a higher price. Okay, that's that's kind of sort of maybe a little closer to how economic shorts work than I anticipated it to be. 
But look, hedge fund managers would purchase stocks at a low price, selling them immediately. And when the company tanks, they have to buy those stocks back, and they buy them back at a lower price, pocketing the difference. It's literally profiting on the misery of others, and that's what capitalism thrives on. But fear not. Earlier this year, all of this was revealed to the general public when a bunch of nerds decided to buy up all the GameStop stocks, thwarting hedge fund managers and leaving them short a few billion dollars. Now this is truly the revenge of the nerds. About six hours after that happened, the former chairperson of the Federal Reserve and the current United States Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, put forth an investigation to prevent average Americans from becoming financially stable off of the stock exchange. And this is seen as a noble act within capitalism because you have to protect your pimps. Okay, Janet Yellen was paid upwards of $800,000 by the cap company that lost billions thanks to some tech-savvy nerds. But Janet Yellen comes from a long line of capitalist politicians that profit off of the stock market. Right before Biden announced that he would be supporting the development of electric cars, Nancy Pelosi purchased about $500,000 of Tesla stocks. Right before the pandemic hit, big-name senators like Democrat Dianne Feinstein sold their stocks knowing that there would be an economic crash. Look, insider trading is looked at as a crime, but gets nothing but a slap on the wrist. The nerds that saved GameStop by played by the rules, and they set up by the stock market, and then their servers were erased off Discord. Robinhood, the ironically named stock trading app, deleted GameStop, GameStop stocks, very difficult to say, along with AMC and other stocks that could disrupt the rich by getting richer off of the misery of others. And Google erased all of their bad reviews, so it looks like they were an up-and-up company doing up-and-up things. So the lesson here is that even if you play by the rules, the champions of capitalism will change the rules to ensure that they can manufacture more poverty to keep us divided and fighting each other instead of capitalism itself. Look, calling capitalism a system of equality is laughable, considering it's a system that has tried to reinvent the wheels of slavery decade after decade. From wage theft to prison slavery, capitalism only works when the scales are tilted. In order to be a good capitalist, you have to be willing to ignore the humanity of others and value things like stocks and cars far more. More and more people are seeing capitalism for what it is, that it's a system built on inequality and thrives on the misery of others and dividing us in the working class. It's a hostile relationship between capitalism and the working class. For capitalism, it's at war with the working class. And of course it is, considering that one of the ways capitalism actually thrives is by profiting off wars. Champions of capitalism will find any excuse to use military might to seize the resources of a nation or a group of people it deems inferior. Now, there are many ways we can move further away from capitalism. One major way would be to democratize the workplace and regulate private industries, preventing them from exploiting the workers and gaming the system. On an electoral level, allowing for more political parties to represent the people and decreasing the commercialization of politics would prevent the deep-rooted corruptions in our system. A system that can't be criticized will call all its criticisms treasonous, but its critiques are what help us find better solution and rediscover our humanity as a species. And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this, please make sure you hit that like button, hit that share button, and get the word out about content like this. Because content like this is often suppressed by some of the, the, the larger corporate mainstream uh, podcasting and content creation creating outlets. I'm very excited to announce that I'm bringing back the live virtual stand-up comedy shows once a month, last Friday of every month. Tickets for those shows are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com. 
Uh, while you're on my website, you can do a plethora of different things. You can catch up on episodes of this very podcast, uh, of my live stream show, Road Reflections, and past episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, uh, which are related to the live virtual comedy shows that I'm doing. That's that's how they're recorded. They're recorded in front of a live virtual audience. So uh, you can catch up on those. Uh, if you want to, you can also make a one-time donation or become a sustaining member. Sustaining members get free tickets to those live virtual comedy shows I just talked about. Uh, they also get additional bonus stand-up comedy content that nobody else gets, as well as some free additional fun gifts that I am planning to, uh, to send to uh, the sustaining members. You can also check out my stand-up comedy albums uh, that are available on my website. And if you go to my Bandcamp, which is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com, you can get pretty much my entire stand-up comedy collection for free. Uh, uh, there's, I think, one comedy album that you might have to pay for right now, uh, but everything's on a pay-what-you-can uh, price level. So if you would like to get most of that stuff for free, you can do so over on my Bandcamp page, which, again, is krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. And lastly, I also want to let you guys know that uh, if, uh, if you're not a fan of the YouTubes, uh, or the Facebooks and their censorship of uh, of content creators uh, that uh, talk about anti-establishment topics. Uh, a good place to go right now would be to Rockfin. You can find my channel over on rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, They're a blockchain crypto site that primarily focuses on ensuring that content creators can earn a living by creating content and they're uncensored so you can basically talk about what you feel like you need to talk about without the censorship of any sort of algorithm uh, and uh, and all the content will be curated based on what you subscribe to so once again go to rockfin.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, the subscriptions are about ten dollars a month but when you become a subscriber over at rockfin you not only get my premium content but you get the premium content of basically every single content creator that's on Rockfin. That's Graham Elwood, that's Ron Pacone, Lee Camp, Kim Iverson, Nico House, Jimmy Dore, The Convo Couch, Action for Assange, and plenty more. Uh, so be sure uh, to to check out Rockfin, and if you're ready to leave YouTube, that is the place to go to, to become a subscriber. Leave tips for channels that you like, and there's plenty of free content on there as well. Thank you so much for tuning in.